Boa tarde, Brasil. <laughs> I'm Silvina Mosquini, and I'm an entrepreneur that became an investor. And I wonder how many of you are entrepreneurs? <laughs> Excellent. How many times did you ask for money and instead you got advice? <laughs> did it happen to anyone? It certainly happened to me a lot of times. This is how I came up with an idea that it was quite different to fundraise. And this is how I became the first Latin American woman to lead a company to unicorn status without even raising a dollar from a venture capitalist. As you know, they said that after the swans always comes the unicorns. Black swans events lead to opportunities. Crisis leads to opportunities, as Chinese culture said. I was in 2014 living in Verona and I developed a technology to manage remote teams called Transparent Business. That was a technology that I developed out of my own need, the need to manage a distributed team with transparency and accountability. But of course, it was very early on in the market. And as you know, being too early is even as bad as being too late. So it was quite a challenge for me to raise money. I was presenting the idea to investors and as it happened before, in my first time as an entrepreneur in 2000, when I was part of the leadership team of Patagon.com, the online bank that was sold to Banco Santander Central Hispano in $785 million, I faced the challenge of people telling me this is not going to happen. Because as an entrepreneur, you are seeking to solve solutions, to solve problems and bring solutions. But if the solutions are too disruptive, Many people will not understand. If they don't understand you, they will not give you the money. That happened at that time, and it happened then. I was asking for money. They gave me a lot of advice. And then what I did was to leverage from different approaches to raise capital. I did equity for services deals, was approaching media companies and getting them to give me remnant advertising space so I could promote my company. And they will give me something that they did not consider money but for me it was as good as money because i need fiat currency i need real money to buy that space but the breakthrough came when the pandemic hit as i told you i was running a company to manage remote workers and the answer that i have to my proposition when i was presenting it to investor was like yeah that's fine remote workers sounds good but we like to see the people actually sitting there in an office because the idea of having an office, especially for Latin America, was very much associated to the idea of power. My office, my employees, my people, my space. So it was very tied up to the ego. And this created a huge barrier in addition to the trust issue to facilitate remote work. But I discovered that even though there was a massive need out there with the pandemic that half the world, 3.2 billion people, were sent to their homes. Remote work moved from being a vitamin to become an aspirin. And the ability to enable this was key for business continuity. So suddenly, I was struggling to grow as fast as I could, but I didn't have the money. I have the need, I have the clarity of the market. People suddenly understood my value proposition, but I didn't have the money. And the process with fundraising with venture capitalists was slow. And as a woman, my chances of getting funded by venture capitalists was pretty null. Like 2% of the capital from VCs go to female founders or diverse founders as well. If you are not born in the middle of Silicon Valley, it's quite challenging to raise at the right valuation and at the right conditions because raising is not hard. Not losing the company in the process is the challenging. So I learned there was something that could help me, my team, and take our vision to reality. Obama, Obama presents a Jobs Act, which is the Jumpstart Business Act. In the United States at that time, there was a challenge. There were not so many companies uh, doing IPOs. So President Obama developed this regulation called the Jobs Act that allowed private companies to sell their stock uh, and advertise it to the general public. This is what in general terms is known as 
crowd financing. Crowdfunding is one of the regulations of crowd finances. So I did two types of crowd financing. Regulation D for accredited investors in the US who are people who were experienced investors and Regulation C to promote this offering all over the world. And then I raised $40 million and took my company to a billion dollar valuation without much liquidity, without having to issue uh, a preferred stock only, ordinary stock, common stock to take care of my early investors. And then I learned the process. I saw that by raising money, by advertising the offer of a stock of my own company, I developed a database and I developed the know-how to help other companies do the same and grow their companies, empowering people to invest in them, facilitate the process of crowdfunding globally. And for that reason, I developed what we call Unicorn Hunters, which is a show that allows, like if you know Shark Tank, something similar will come to mind, allow people to invest in the companies featured at the show at the same time that the Unicorn Hunters do it. So we seek all over the world for uh, entrepreneurs that can inspire confidence, create right, and rally the support for others to become backable. But we did it through a show, an interactive show that mixed together two concepts, the concept of entertainment and the concept of enrichment. Become enriched by getting entertained. An interactive show, here you can see that show in Job and Pan and online in UnicornHunters.com. You can see companies that are there. You can click on them if you want to invest. And then facilitate also for the people that was on the other side the opportunity to invest alongside with professional investors. Because that was the other issue that I saw is that normal people that do not have uh, a lot of money or do not have a cousin or a relative or a nephew that is an entrepreneur rarely get the opportunity to invest in companies that are at early stage but growing. So I built this um, a company alongside with uh, several stars and people from the public sector. I partner up with Steve Wozniak, the co-founder of Apple. Uh, I partner up also with the former treasurer of the United States, whose signature is in 75 per percent of all the uh, dollar bills in circulation, with Lance Bass from NSYNC, with Speaker Barco from the UK, uh, Mo Bella, former senior advisor of President Biden, my partner Alex, who was uh, the founder of the first commercial bank in in Russia, and uh, Christian Mantapolos. If you saw HBO Silicon Valley, probably you recognize as the a famous billionaire whose car door opened like this instead of like this. If not, check it out. He is really hilarious. And we launched this show. And if Gabby helped me to play it, you will see what it is about. More than a year ago, a new era started. A new way of investing arrived. And unicorn hunters came to change the way people invest. Can invest make money on this. A new way to fund innovative ideas opened the world to greater opportunities. We can predict health outcomes and save lives. Bringing billion dollar ideas to life. It's so crazy, it might just work. By now, we have generated over $280 million in investment applications <laughs> and featured 14 companies from eight countries. Now we have people reaching out Dubai and China and all these amazing places. Sounds like you've got all the business running, you're already operational. We are able to engage with potential investors globally. I think this company will be a real knockout. We're making headlines around the globe. Hablamos de unicorn hunters. Unicorn hunters. In the Washington Post, Forbes, CNN Business, The New Herald, Univision, and more. Expanding our innovative vision along with Microsoft and Google as global partners through mentorships, training, and tools for the companies in our portfolio. Oh, thank you for having me first. This is, this is such an honor, and I'm excited to have Lisa Joyce as well. We're proud that our show is featured on in-flight entertainment, including WestJet, TAP Portugal, and Etihad Airways, with a combined reach potential of 45 million passengers. To accelerate our growth and continue to disrupt the market, we launched Unicoin, the next generation cryptocurrency. We are going to create currency which is much more stable than currencies which are backed by no assets. Unicoin is changing the crypto market. It's the cryptocurrency of the future. Addressing the volatility of traditional coins. One, it's registered with the SEC. Two, it's backed by emerging growth 
company. And making crypto investments accessible to all. This is the cryptocurrency for everyone. To become the number one cryptocurrency. The Unicoin brand took the country by storm at airports, landmarks, and transportation hubs from LA to New York City and took over buses from Rodeo Drive to the Hamptons. We showcased our brand at technology events worldwide, reaching thousands of potential investors. More people than ever are joining our mission to democratize the investment world. NFL Hall of Famers, F1 legends, Juan Pablo Montoya, and even the 43rd treasurer of the United States, Rosie Rios. It's the future, so it's something that I choose to believe in and invest in. All back Unicoin. They all agree that blockchain technology is the future of investment, and we're proud to lead its charge. Join the wealth building revolution that started with Unicorn Hunters and continues with Unicorn. Welcome to the Unicorn Age. So, as you see, there are many different ways in which you can raise capital. One is global equity crowdfunding. You can set up your uh, crowdfunding campaign. You can do it in the US as well and raise globally, but also you can tokenize the, uh, your securities. Or if you can, you can apply to participate in our show. We'd love to have more Brazilian entrepreneurs. We look for companies that are in growth stage that can scale exponentially, given the money and given the visibility. The show is airing uh, globally. And what we look for entrepreneurs are that have brilliant ideas that can articulate very clearly their business proposition to make them backable. They need to be credible. That's extremely important that are willing to write the book instead of reading it, that they are willing to do something that is innovative, not a copycat of other companies. But above all, we are looking for companies and entrepreneurs that know their numbers, know their markets, and think differently. Think with impact, because we do believe that also building companies that have a social impact will have not only a benefit for the bottom line, but also for the society. Many 